Hi, thanks for joining me. This class will be dedicated to being in Uttanasana in different variations. We'll use a stool, we'll use a chair, we'll use blocks in different ways to create space for the lower back, to create length, and to release tension in your neck. All right, so join me, let's get started. Before we start our practice, I wanted to let you know about my online programs and workshops. Whether you're new to Iyengar yoga and want to learn the basics in a systematic way, a seasoned practitioner looking to revisit the essentials, or a yoga teacher seeking inspiration. These programs and workshops are self-paced, allowing you to make consistent progress and revisit specific topics whenever you like. You can find the link in the description below. With that said, let's begin our practice today. Okay, so we're going to be doing everything using some sort of prop. So we're gonna go into Uttanasana. I'm gonna to turn to the side and I'll first just go into Uttanasana bending forward. So as you come forward, depending on your availability in your, in your legs, in your hamstrings, you might have to bend a couple times to lengthen. And then taking the hands down on the floor. So this is classic. I'm bringing my feet together and walking my hands back and releasing the head down. So it may take a while, so we'll do quite a few different variations. And while we do that, your hamstrings will warm up a bit. So you start to bring your hands to the side and just release the head down. Stay there for a few breaths. Press into the front of the foot, to the heel. Feel that you've distributed your weight equally. Inner thighs are rolling back. Fingertips on the floor. Lift your shoulders up and release the back of the head down. Okay, so we're going to come up out of that. And now you're going to take a couple blocks in case your hands don't reach the floor. So if they reach the floor, then you don't need the blocks. You can just have the blocks there. For those of you that need the blocks, you have the hands right underneath the shoulders. And we're using the hands on the blocks to lengthen forward. So I'm extending the whole side trunk. So often we shrink, so here we're gonna use the fingertips, press the fingertips and lengthen forward. If you're not using blocks and you can reach the floor, then just be on the fingertips. We often start this way, Urdhva, Adamukas, lifting up and lengthening. Thighs are moving back, side trunk is moving forward, looking forward. And now you're gonna take both blocks. So if your hamstrings are feeling a little tight, we'll see if we can do something about creating a little bit more length through the back of the leg. So you're going to take two blocks. You can just bend down, bring the ball of the foot right onto that block. You can do this at the wall as well that I'm showing you from the side. So there you'll spread the toes, lift up, the heel pressing down, and then from here, I'm lengthening through the whole back of the leg. So if you need to start with your knees bent, you can do that. And actually, I'm gonna take this block over here for my hands. I'll bring both feet onto this block. So if you need some more height, you can have that other block and extend forward and lift up, look up. So the more I move back, I can feel, I have a certain experience in my legs. Hips are not lined up over the heels. Coming forward, I feel a little bit more extension there. So when we have tight hamstrings, it creates a pull on the lower back. Oftentimes people have pain in the lower back, tightness, and it can be chronic pain. So here, this is helping you to get that length through the backs of the legs, through the hamstring, through the back muscles as you lengthen forward. You can have your fingertips onto the floor, scoop the back forward, look forward, press the heel down, 
And as you press the heel down, lengthen the calf down, and then lift up from the back of the leg. Just have a few breaths there. Observe the pain that you feel or sensation. Whatever the experience, breathe into it. And then release. Walk the blocks forward again or bring your hands forward. Extend. Abdomen is moving in and up. So the, the core of your body, the navel, moving back to the lower back, broadening the lower back, inner thighs moving back. Okay, I'm going to come up now, and I'm going to get a stool. All right, so if you have something a little bit higher, I'll show you what we're going to use. So I've got this stool, and this is something I'm just going to lie my back over. It depends on the height of the stool and the height of your legs. It should be right at the top of the thighs. So this just happens to be at the top of my thighs. So I'll be able to come down over this. Now, if it weren't at the top of my thighs, I might need to build it up a little bit. Let's just imagine you're taller. I'm going to put the blocks here just to give myself some height so you can see when you build it up with the bolster, you're able to lie over that and come down. So you're just holding on. You're allowing that bolster to spread the back, spread the hips, and release the head. Release the neck. And then just be there and breathe. So hear that spreading through the back, spreading through the hips, allows those tight back muscles to soften. You can even take your hands and release your head down. Or if you had a blanket or something to support the head if it was hanging and it wasn't comfortable. Okay, so stay in this for a few breaths. You're broadening through the shoulders. You're releasing the neck. Any tension in the neck. Shoulder blades. It's a nice resting spot, staying as long as you want, just so that you feel that expanse and release coming through the back, okay? So again, I showed this standing on two blocks just so I could raise myself up and you could see how you could place that bolster. I could probably still use the bolster, and it's kind of nice on the abdomen. If, you, if your hips came right to that chair and you didn't need the bolster, still you could have a blanket or something just to rest the abdomen on. I can take my feet a little bit wider. On my toes. And I'm just allowing the toes to press down and let, letting the body hang, which is a really nice feeling. So the abdomen is fixed, the chest is fixed, and the breath moves into the back body, into the side trunk. Just letting your breath be extended, so your exhalation a bit longer, and with that starts to bring some quietness, release the muscles, release any tension. All right, and then I'll come up out of that. From here, you can either keep the bolster or just have your arms on that stool and take the arms, folding them, 
I have my forehead on the arms, walking the feet away so that I'm more in a 90 degree angle now, the feet underneath the hips, get a little bit more rest for the head, the shoulders, and the arms. So if you have tension in the shoulders, shoulder blades here, the head is relaxed completely. So you can bring some quietness to the neck. You're just watching, you don't put any strain, but you're feeling completely supported. And then with the head completely supported and weighted the elbows, just relax your upper shoulder girdle. Taking the memory of that bolster when you were over that stool, just breathe into the back body. Navel's moving towards your lower back, broadening your lower back, broadening the middle of the back, relaxing the shoulders completely. You can change the cross on the arms so that once you change the cross on the arms, you can you'll be in a little bit different position, so just be there as well. It's good to do both sides. And then coming up, extend the arms and walk back a little bit further. So now you're lengthening side trunk, moving away from your hips. So again, that's taking away that tightness in the arms and the shoulders. Opening, creating that space in the armpit chest. All right, I brought a chair here. I'm gonna keep my hips at the stool, lifting up and over. So again, I'm supported on that bolster, and then I'll extend my arm. So if you had another stool, you could use that. But here, I'm using the chair, and I can extend the chair away. You can even hold on to the chair. You just wanna use that chair to get this extension through the side trunk. So the more you can lengthen that side area and the armpit area, the more openness you can get in your shoulders. Standing on the feet like you would be standing in Tadasana. Abdomen is resting on that bolster, lower back is relaxed. You can take your feet. If you have acute back pain, one thing you can do is turn your toes in, which gives you a turning of the thighs and a little bit more broadening of the back. All right, and then come up. So that's nice to do. If you have a um, kitchen table, if you have a countertop, imagining this was your countertop, and lie over that countertop, and then bring your arms forward. Okay, so just have to look around your house and see what is available for you so that you can use the, the props that you have there. All right, so I'm gonna use one other pad here. And this is gonna be more for the neck. So tension in the neck, do a lot of sitting, computer, hunching up. And maybe you even have a flat neck. So the neck is flat, the lower back is a little bit flat. So they, one area affects the other. So this one, I'm gonna use the stool and turn this and bring my chin. So I wanna lengthen the back of the neck, bring the chin onto this support, and then I'll just use my arms here. So they're comfortable, walk away so that my hips are over my heels. And I'm still getting that length. 
to the side trunk. So using the arms in such a way that you're extending forward and you're looking up. So the throat is lengthening. The throat is lengthening. The neck is getting more of a curve there, giving a little bit of softness to that neck area. You can also take your hands up, hold on like this. So find a comfortable position for your arms. If that wasn't comfortable, then you can change. Sink your chest down, shoulder blades down. Okay, coming up. Okay, so I have this dowel. I'm going to take it behind my back and straighten the arms. And I'll come back down on the stool and reach my arms up. So here I'm lengthening from the shoulder to the hands. So I'll keep this. A little hard on my chin, so I'm going to bring that little bit of extra cushioning. Roll the shoulders back and lift the arms and lengthen the arms away. As I do this, shoulder blades are moving down. From the tips and the outer shoulders, moving back. Okay, so that's quite high. Now you can try without using that support. Just move this over here now. And just come into a wide leg position. Have the hands on the hips. Come forward into that bending action of Uttanasana. And then have your hands a little bit wide. So you'll find the position that it feels most comfortable. If you have tight shoulders, maybe you come out like this. And you can start like this. And then just work to lift the arms up. Keep the arms straight. Shoulder blades moving toward the front chest. So in other words, watch that your shoulders aren't rounding, that you're getting this movement of the outer shoulder moving back. So just showing you here, so the shoulders are moving back this way. They're not coming this way. So as I move the shoulders back this way, I can bring the shoulder blades in, chest forward. So coming back to that, folding forward, and then lift the arms, hold, feel that extension through the arms, and bring your head down. Let your head go, let your neck elongate, using the weight of the head. Bring the arms over any amount that you can. And as you do that, feel that the weight is on the front of the foot. So you're not leaning back into the heels and the hips getting thrown back, but the hips are coming forward. Bring your arms over. And then bring them back. You can do it a few times. So as I said, if it was too much to bring your hands closer, then bring a little further away. Roll the shoulders out, extend the arms, lift that piece of wood. You could use a, oh, what could you use? A broom. You could use a broom at home if that's all you had. Or you could use a strap. You could hold the strap behind your head and then come forward. So it's a nice release for the arms, for the armpit area, for the neck, and for the head. Do that one, one more time. Change the position of the hands. Now I have the fingers going down. So it puts the arms in a different position. And then I'll come over. So I, as I hold that wood, I'm pushing, I'm pulling. So just experience the difference in the two. Okay, so that's a nice release for the neck, for the shoulders, for the arms. All right, now I'm going to 
do the same thing. I have a chair handy. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to take my hands behind me and interlace the fingers. So now the hands are coming a little bit closer. And I'm reaching the arms up, interlacing the so as I interlace the fingers, I'm squeezing them so they don't fall apart. So I'm using that slight grip, not too much, not white knuckling it, but holding, and then get that rotation. So you want to get this lift of the armpit chest. The armpit is here, getting that turning. Extend the arms back, and then roll the shoulders, and then lift up. And as you lift up, release the head. Bring the arms back. Stay with your breath. If you experience some sensitivity, tightness, just breathe into it. Be there a little bit. And then see if you can go a little bit further. Sometimes the nervous system just needs to know what you're doing. And after you've done it a few times, then there's no longer that strong sensation. So just be there. Release your arms, release your neck, release your head. Keep the legs firm. Thighs are moving back. Feel the backs of the legs as you extend from the calves down toward the heel. Lift the backs of the thighs up. Kneecaps are lifting, rolling the inner thighs back. And then bring your hands back onto your hips. Inhale, come up. Okay. I took this chair. I wanted you to have this to do the, the next for, forward fold we'll do. So depending on your height, um, you'll either be able to fold over this chair with the chair right at the top of the thigh like we did on the stool and then bring your head down. Now, this is feeling like I'm really getting pressed by that, so I may even want to have a couple blocks. And now it's too high, so I'm gonna come bring it back and let that chair rail be against the top of my thighs and rest my head. Okay, so first, getting that length so I can take my arms over the chair seat and rest my head. Okay, if you're quite tall, you may need to even build it up with blocks. Now, I won't be able to go over that because I'm not that tall, but if you were that tall, you could go over like that. Okay, probably at that point the stool would be better for you. So I'm just going to show you another way that you can use this chair, and maybe if you're tall this is a better way. So you just, I folded the chair in, the bottom of the chair is facing out, tops of the thighs are against that chair bar. So this chair goes against the thighs, I have a bolster here, fold my arms, relax my head down, and feel that my feet are underneath my hips, thighs are able to move back, and relax the head. Again, my lower back is widening and lengthening at the same time. So it helps you to stretch those lower back muscles both broaden and, and lengthen. In a supported way, your head's supported. If this were too low for you, you could have two bolsters here. Or if the chair is gonna work for you better when it's open, like the first way I showed you, you could have that bolster. You could even slant the chair Take your feet a little bit wider and release. So it all depends on your size, your size of your equipment. But here, 
Now the bolster's under my abdomen and my head is rested. Okay, so the object is to have some support but have your experience be a good one so that it feels good. If it's too strong, you get your thighs and get some blocks, build it up. All right, now we're gonna take two chairs. So get two chairs. So I hope you got two chairs. Now two bolsters as well. So you're going to have the bolsters like so. Have the chairs about a foot and a half apart. You can bring your head between. So when you're tired, you wanna cool down your brain, relax your head and your neck and your shoulders. This is nice to do. So you're going to come down, bring your head between the two chairs, and then you'll have your shoulders on the bolsters. And just relax your arms out to the side. So now my head is able to hang. My shoulders are completely relaxed. So you build up to the height that you would need. So if you're taller, you might need a, a blanket with a bolster. You might need two bolsters. And again, you might need some blocks under your feet. So just taking what's right for your body, right for your size, and the size of your equipment that you're using. So just let yourself be here. It's really a wonderful way to get a little bit of quietness to the brain, coolness, and to bring some freshness. Rejuvenate your head, your brain, your face, and get a little bit of traction to the neck. So here, the weight of the head creates that length. The shoulders are there on the bolster. Stay with your breath. This is very nice on the low back as well. You're still in that same direction that we've been in with the back broadening, lengthening. Allow your exhalation to be longer. It's completely surrendering into it. You could stay as long as you want. I'll come up. I've shown you several different ways that you can go into Uttanasana, supported with the abdomen, with the hips, with the thighs, with the head supported. All of these things for neck pain, neck strain, and just to quiet the brain, to release muscles in the back, tension. So whether it be chronic or just you had a day that you sat a lot or you did something where you were hunched up and you got some strain. So you can use these to release from that. So now I'm gonna go back into Uttanasana. So at the end of this, you can come back into Uttanasana with the feet together, fingertips on the floor, lengthen, and then take your hands wider and release your head. So I'm going to show you this other version here. Sometimes we do in Prasarita Padatanasana. You can do this a little bit wider, feet a little bit wider apart. And you can adjust these blocks in a variety of positions. So I'll show you from the side. So as I go forward, if I want to rest my head, come onto the crown of the head. That block support can be nice. If you need more support, you can have this taller. Come right onto the crown of the head. 
Now this size works for me, might not work for you. So you might need to, you can see I'm at that 90 degree. I still have that, that fold there that I had when I had the thighs against the stool, when I had the abdomen supported there. So if you were gonna stay here for any length of time, just making sure that your back's not rounded like so. If it is, then take that extra support. It will be much more relaxing for your back. And then when you stay a little bit longer, you may find that you would adjust those blocks to something a little bit lower because the body starts to release. Hamstrings get used to that stretch. And you can take your hands back. And take your hands on your ankles and just be there. Stay with your breath. Okay, so we started out with Uttanasana without any support. I showed you a variety of different ways to have support and then we ended up again just using minimal support. So play around with this, use what you need and what you find relief from. Okay, so it's all about you and your body and what you, how you need to modify and where you're having some sort of tension or pain. So focusing on those areas. Okay, all right, we'll see you, we'll see you soon. Namaste.